Well, Satia Messer has had a tremendous run in college basketball as a player. She led Arkansas to their first Final Four ever in the late 90s. As a head coach, she earned Coach of the Year honors. And now with Kim Mulkey, they've been working together for almost a decade, eight years at Baylor, one year here at LSU. She joins us now. Satia, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. It's great to visit with you today. And I tell you what, I'm looking at your accolades over the years. So when you and Kim were at Baylor, mm -hmm. eight for eight, folks, eight years together, eight Big 12 championships. <laughs> Kim says she doesn't take conference tournaments uh, seriously, but they still won six of those too. A national title, six NCAA Elite Eights. Your overall record there, 260 and 23. I could add a hundred losses to that and it would still be impressive. You know, you'd still be winning two out of every three. So um, when she, had, can you remember the first time she said Satya, LSU, I think, I'm thinking about making this move. Yeah. Yeah, um, she actually called me and I was in my kitchen, finished, I just finished grocery shopping. So I'm like putting up groceries and like, hey, coach, what's up? What's going on? She's like, you know, what do you think about LSU? And I thought, uh, well, you know, hey, that's a great job. It's the SEC. It's home for you. Uh, but we have a Final Four team here at Baylor. Are we sure we want to do this? And she said, you're right, let me think about it. And um, so a couple days passed and she called, called the entire staff back and said, listen, I'm really thinking about this. And it was hard, you could tell emotionally that it was hard for her um, to make that decision. But once she made it, you know, her heart has been here at LSU and it was tough leaving um, former players in the community of Waco, but um, it's been a great, great situation here. Yeah, you always want to be somewhere where it's up and running, right? Right. And when you've got it up and running, like you guys had at Baylor, yeah. to leave, like a lot of people when her name first came up, she's not coming here. Why would she leave Baylor? You yeah. know, and I and I honestly was waiting every day to see the news break that Baylor had extended her and, you know, gave her a raise and all that. Correct. Didn't believe in sunshine and rainbows and whatnot, but it happened. And so, um, yeah, that was uh, such a such a big move for you guys to do that. Yeah, it was. It was. It was tough, as I as I said earlier, leaving our clay, our players at Baylor. Uh, just great people, hard workers, and just that community, Baylor community, and the city of Waco. But you know, this business is like that sometimes. You know, um, you have to go with what's best for you at that particular time. And fortunately. Um, we all came together, most of us, all except for one assistant. And so it's like your family moves to another city. So all of us, are, we've been together for a while and um, that, that helps as you're making that transition. I saw you were officially hired in June. She mm -hmm. was hired in April. Did it take you a while to decide? Or? Yeah, what I did was, um, I immediately, when coach told us that she was gonna make the transition here, I told her, okay, coach, you know, I still have that itch to be a head coach. And so I'm gonna stay back here and, uh, you know, and, and pursue the job here. And um, I did, went through the process with Baylor and ultimately decided that LSU should be my home, mm -hmm. so. Uh, so this year with LSU, 25 and five overall, 13 and three through the SEC. So now you're 285 and 28 with Kim Mulkey. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and you're in charge of recruiting along with the other assistants on the staff. I know it was frustrating throughout the years to see Kalani Brown. Yeah. You know, people like that leave the state of Louisiana and go to Baylor. Why can't we keep the talent at home, right? And so, um, so now that's the, the big mission. You're gonna lose a lot of players off this team this year, but. Correct to replenish the talent and to get that kind of talent here at LSU as well, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we're excited about what we were able to bring in less than five months, like a top 10 recruiting class. We signed the first McDonald's All-American since 2007 here at LSU and a young lady named Fly J. Um, so we're, we're excited about the direction we're going from a recruiting standpoint. Um, so we're hoping that we can keep the Kalani's and the Moon Ursulines, those type of yeah. kids uh, from Louisiana home. Right. Uh, Flage, uh, she's going to be playing pretty soon in the Jordan Brand Classic April the 15th in Chicago. She made 12 three-pointers in the game this year. She's uh, listed as the number six guard in the country. And on top of that, she is a rapper <laughs> that reached the quarterfinals of America's Got Talent. So yeah. this is a multi-talented young lady who's coming to Baton Rouge. She is. And you know, as high as her talent is, she's a better person. 
She's a young lady in her rapping, use no curse words. She's a young lady that I receive text messages from her at 5 a.m. She's up in the gym. Um, she works extremely hard. She's very, very, very talented at both rapping and basketball. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a great fit for both. Uh, we as a coaching staff understand that, you know, that both are important to her and we're gonna allow her to, to do both and, and, and try to be the best. Uh, how goofy can I sound saying this, but in the music video, all falls down. Which all falls down. <laughs> when it all falls down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that one. This, this, maybe she should be on America's Got Talent. So Boosie makes an appearance in that, right? But she does make a comment. She goes, if I don't handle my craft, the rest of this maybe all falls down. Right? Yeah. So that's the number one thing. The basketball is the number one thing. Yes. And, yes, it is. And she understands that. Um, that's why she wanted to come for, play for the best. And that's Coach Moki. In my opinion, Coach Moki is the best coach in the country and uh, that's why she wanted to come play for the best because she understands that basketball is number one. Working with Kim Mulkey, uh, yeah. what, what is it, I mean obviously we're talking one of the greatest of all time and uh, the fans that have gotten a chance to enjoy this this year, I mean I know personally I got one eye on the game and I got one eye on her. I, I just want to watch her get after a ref, I want to watch the fiery spirit that she brings to the, to the game. What is it that makes Kim Mulkey great? Um, number one, her, her spirit as a person. Kim is an amazing woman, and uh, people don't understand that about her. her ah, all that passion, she also carries it over to her staff, her, 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 um, her family, and those kind of things. So I think that's the thing that people probably don't understand is that she's a caring woman, but she's the most competitive woman you ever want to meet. She wants to be the first on the bus. She wants to be <laughs> first to finish her food. I mean, she's first to brush her teeth. She's just very, very competitive in every aspect, and I love that. Humorously, okay, so at the end of this Tennessee game mm -hmm. this year, so I got a couple people texting me in Facebook, who's the Tennessee coach that's yelling at Kim Mulkey? Oh, at the my end of the God, if I hear that one more time. <laughs> at the end of the game, because I, I wasn't watching it live. I was keeping track on the stats as the game got close there at the end. I'm like, oh, no, you guys hung on to win. So I go back and watch the video. I'm like, no, that's, uh, that's one of her assistant coaches. And, and hearing what it was about, it was really like two parents that were kind of expressing their frustration to a kid like it was like I told her not to stay out past midnight well she stayed out past midnight and it was like I told her not to leave the girl open in the corner well she left the girl open in the corner that, that's kind of what happened right exactly what happened exactly what happened so we barely as you know in, in, in watching and keeping up with the scores we barely won at Tennessee and one of the things we've been talking to Hannah Gusters about is when we put you on the ball in a late situation, get big, get some deflections, those kind of things. So uh, Hannah did a great job of that. But someone <laughs> left their man and went double. And we left a Tennessee player wide open and they got a great shot. And coach turned around to me and was like, hey, how did that happen? And we started dialoguing on how that happened. And when we talked, we were very passionate and it looked like I was like going at her. <laughs> and, and we were just talking about the game and what happened. And we both was like, yeah, Hannah, she did a good job on the, on the ball. And so I don't know how that got turned into <laughs> someone's going at, well, at Kim Mulkey and you know, you know, no one's just going to walk up and just go at Kim Mulkey. So yeah. I, anyone that knows her knows that's not true. Yeah. So, um, but that just shows you that, um, you know, we are both very passionate and it looked as if it was more there than what it was. <laughs> well, yeah. But I, we were just talking about the game. That once again, like what you see and what reality is sometimes uh, are, are two different things. Yeah. Right. And uh, once again, it's, it's a thing that the football coach in Tuscaloosa, who once coached here, mm -hmm. always talks about the process, right? We won the game, Kayla stole, stole the ball at the end and whatnot, but the process, we left the girl open, and if we do that, maybe in March Madness, that could hurt us, you know? So it's, it's just correcting those things moving forward. Right, right, right. right. And that's, that's what we were doing, just correcting them, yeah. talking about them, because we're going to coach to the very end. And so that was our conversation on how do we get better and how do we leave our man and go double. Yeah, and, and me, you know, covering football and, and watching the NFL, and these days with Twitter and everything, 
you know, a coach and a quarterback, they yell at each other on the, on the sidelines. It gets blown up into something big. You know, but this is big time athletics. You know, this is Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah. yeah this is Pat Summit. This is a great environment. Yeah. And a great chance. And we were fighting then for a second in the conference overall. Yeah. So it was, it was a, yeah, very impactful game. LSU had one in Knoxville, Grant, in how long? Since like 2000, been a long time. Eight, nine, ten, something, something like that. Something like that. I can look. But, um, what were your early impressions of the team when you got here in terms of what you were inheriting and whatnot? Uh, you know, you look on paper, you say, okay, this team was 9-13 and 13 last year. What do we have here? What, what, did, you look, what did you see? Well, um, I'm a women's basketball junkie, so I kind of knew of the team prior. I knew Kayla Pointer was a special talent. Um, I knew that there was a lot of experience on the team. So that was my first impression is, hey, we have some – great people and players to work with yeah and then you added alexis morris in the transfer portal special player yeah and then gusters who you guys had recruited in, in at baylor and coached at baylor yeah yeah to come on and so our biggest thing initially was just um you know getting the players to buy into us as people our vision and then also just uh that trust you know and we got that pretty quickly and from there the players talents took over it's yeah. it's it's them that's doing this yeah the, the transfer portal how do you view it because um it's it, it's a two-way street right when you bring a player in you want them to stick with it you want them sometimes to struggle and to and to maybe fail because it'll get them better they, they get better down the road but but you don't want them to hit the eject button and go somewhere else right yeah absolutely and, and so but then it's like there's free agency now where you can take a player in so um how, how are you as a chief recruiter here how has that changed the game for you? It's changed the game a lot. Um, I will say for us and our philosophy, we still want to build our base on high school players. We want high school players to, uh, first because you get a chance to develop them. You know, uh, transfer probably that sometimes they're one and done, maybe two and done. And so um, that's our base, but we also want to add that talent in with the high school players and let that develop. Um, but it's changed the game tremendously. Um, once we finish up in March Madness, that's the first thing that I'm on that computer <laughs> and trying to get people in and, and those things. And for better or for worse, uh, visiting with Simone Augustus the other day. Yeah. She was the top pick in the WNBA draft and I asked her, what was your first salary? $45,000 was her first salary. She was the number one pick in the draft. Wow. So. You get the, the players stay four years and five years because they, the, the temptation, unlike the men, to go pro isn't, isn't there, which I think, uh, which I enjoy as a sportscaster to get to know the players and the fans get to know them over four and five years yeah. as well. And you can build a nucleus like you've got right now. Yeah. Right? Well, you've got a Kayla Pointer, Faustina Fua, Jalen Cherry, uh, these players that have been here for a long time. Correct, correct. And I like that. Like I said, I'd rather have the high school player that you get a chance to build and develop and even with the relationships, you know. Um, so that's the way we prefer to recruit. And again, adding on some transfer reporters with that. LSU averaged uh, over 7,000 fans per game this year. There's 16 home games. Uh, I looked it up during the final four years, the five final four years, it was 3,500, 7,300. Now, 7,300 was a team that went 33-3 and three and lost to a coach named Kim Mulkey in the, in the 2005. final. 2005. 2004, 2005. Yeah, That's great. yeah. Basketball junkie, right? <laughs> Basketball junkie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that was an amazing team with Simone and those guys. But, uh, you know, um, Kim is, is amazing. I remember uh, in that game, she went to a zone mm -hmm. and it just kind of threw LSU off for a little bit. And she's not a zone coach. Anybody that knows her, she's man to man. So yeah. um, she had to do what she had to do to try to win it. But yeah. went to a zone, and I think it kind of shocked LSU a little bit, and they couldn't get in a, in a good rhythm from there. Yeah, uh, from a coaching standpoint, right, zone sometimes is affiliated with lazy basketball. You know, you're kind of covering an area, man to man, you're getting after it, right? Yeah. And so that's kind of, she's never been a zone coach, but that no. day it worked. It worked. Yeah. Hey, you got to do what you have to do to advance. <laughs> well, survive in advance, that's the thing in March. Uh, but, yeah, it worked. Kim is a gritty, gritty, gritty coach, so she's going to teach defense that way. I mean, it's getting up in you, getting after it, and that's why man-to-man -man is so important to us. Yes, Atiyah, that's the irony of it because um, 
that's one of LSU's most disappointing days because that team had Sylvia, Simone, Tamika. They were loaded, and it was kind of like this is a team that's going to win the national title, and uh, and they lost to Baylor that day. Yeah. You know? Could have never imagined all these years later Kim Mulkey would be here as the as the head coach. Isn't it funny how it all aligns up? And I think it, it aligned it up the way it was supposed to be, the timing. Um, sometimes you, you run out of your seasons, and her season at Baylor had ran out, and now we're able to blossom and develop what we can here at LSU, which is amazing. Yeah. Her son Kramer, which I think he could probably be on your staff too, as much as he oh. knows about this team. And, and as much as he's around, he could yeah. definitely be on the staff. <laughs> but, yeah, no, Kramer is an LSU guy through and through you know he played yeah. baseball here yeah. and um, yeah he, he's a guy that he'll he'll talk to us and like you know about the games because he's, he's grown up around his mom you know and his sister both play so he knows the game really well yeah yeah he, he just said you know mom had done about all she could do at Baylor you know she had kind of done everything she could do and the timing was right and, and now she's here because when Kramer played baseball it was always the joke you know hey you Get your mom to come coach at LSU, you know, and it all lined up. It Finally, did. Down, it did. down the line. He was a great player for LSU as a, as a shortstop. Uh, let's talk about some of these other uh, coaches on the staff because, like in football, you know, the head coach is out in front, but without an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator, a good staff, it, it all falls down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Fly Jay. <laughs> but, but Daphne Mitchell, yes. like you, an outstanding player in the collegiate ranks, and uh, she coaches the post players. Six seasons at Baylor with Coach Mulkey. Yeah. Okay, so uh, fun fact about Daphne Mitchell, she played at Georgia Tech, and I actually coached her at Georgia Tech when I was an assistant there. And so um, just kind of stayed in contact with her. She wanted to get in college coaching, um, kind of helped her transition there. And she's blossomed and done her own thing from, from that standpoint. But uh, I've known Daphne since she was 18. She's going to be amazing. She is amazing in this business. Um, and um, I'm excited to, to work with her and see everything she does every day. Awesome. Uh, Kaylin Rice, uh, she's kind of like a whiz kid, right? I mean, she was on the staff with uh, Mulkey going back to 2011. I guess officially she was hired uh, a few years back as a full-time coach. And at the time, 26 years old, the youngest assistant coach in the Big 12, the second youngest in the six major Division I basketball conferences. So uh, she coaches the guards and helps with the scouting. Yep, so Kaylin uh, started off as a student manager and then uh, GA graduate assistant and video. And um, Coach Mocha had a transition in her staff from an assistant position. Um, in the middle of the year and kind of just put Kayla in that position and she's she's flown ever since she's done what she need to do ever since yeah and that's a message to the young people coming up right about paying your dues mm -hmm. and you know to to get where you want to be doesn't yep. happen overnight like that yeah yep Johnny Derrick uh, I joke with him the other day is he the get back coach when Kim gets emotional yeah <laughs> he's pulling Kim back yeah Johnny <laughs> knows Kim since she played in college so yeah He's been on the staff uh, since 2000 uh, and part of those three national championships, the three Big 12 championships. Uh, I read this year he ne he's never missed a game, ever? Never. Unbelievable. No. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, good deal. Yep. Director of operations. And then just to give shout outs to the other people on the staff, uh, uh, Jordan Westbrook is the assistant director of operations. Uh, Shante Crutchfield, the assistant director of operations and recruiting. Joe Schwartz, young Joe Schwartz, uh, assistant director of operations as well. Stylish young man, right? Stylish and funny. Yeah. yeah and Joe played basketball um, at Texas, so he has a basketball background as well. I think Kramer said that he's been around uh, Kim since he was four years old or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, part of that. So, and then Renee Broach, she's been here for 20 years yeah. uh, as the administrative coordinator. So it uh, it takes the staff, right? It, it takes a village to get yeah. it to get it done. But we all, the great thing is we've been with each other forever, and we're excited about it. Good deal. Yeah. All right, uh, a couple more things here. The, the March Madness is starting. Uh, it's a, it's something about this time of year, right? It's yeah. an extra shot of adrenaline as spring is is here, and you go into the the big dance. And LSU hosting for the first time in eight years highest seed they've been since Sylvia Fowles 14 years ago. This is 
This is exciting stuff. Yes, it is. It is. I can't wait. We're excited to host these first two rounds here. Uh, and we're hoping to move forward from there. We're in the Spokane region. And I just think uh, everything is aligned for us to do what we do well. I like the matchups potential and uh, I'm excited. Yeah. You want to go 2,300 miles away, right? You want to go to Spokane. You get them away and get them focused. Yeah. Yep. Well, keep up the great work. Thank you. We enjoyed visiting with you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So Tia Messer, they call her T here at LSU <laughs> and uh, Lady Tigers doing big things. Thank you.